weren't noted for, I mean, two or three years after they were built, they were rusted. Floor boards are always rusted out on them. <laughs> Pretty much all the metal needs to be replaced on. Some very, uh, some different stuff will be taken, but uh, it'll go to a media blaster, get a media blasted, and then we'll put it on a jig where everything's perfectly squared. And at that point, we will start cutting every piece of rotten metal out of it and replacing it with brand new. Now, one of the things that was very common with these cars, and this is one of the reasons we won't, we used to buy cars in a little better condition than this, but after we media blasted, we'd find that they had all kinds of repairs coming. There's no point. People were saying, oh yeah, it's never been rusted. No rust anywhere in your no life. accident. Yeah, okay. When you find out. Somewhere along the line, somebody's lied to somebody. <laughs> We actually have to make this car flow. Uh, what I mean by some of that is like this back end. Yeah, anybody in their dock can bulk this up, but they have to make it form this whole body line. And so everything's cut, the interior uh, brake lights, all that has to flow. And now you can kind of see the raw rear bumper where in fact it is metal that's been cut and formed and filled. Uh, another thing, just to give it some smooth, clean lines, we cut the rip rails off of the car. I don't know if you remember, the old ones stuck out and they weren't uh, quite as exciting. Kind of took away from the flow of the body design. And of course, at this point, we also cut, and I'm not going to lift the hood. <laughs> we also cut the shock towers out and weld in the Mustang II suspension foundation. So this stage is extremely important. It's the foundation of the car itself. So, and it, uh, it's also structurally a huge part as well. Because Carroll Shelby back in the 60s was building cars with 300 horsepower. Today they're <laughs> triple that. <laughs> so you've got to have something that can handle that power. And cutting uh, panels and the floorboards and stuff like that, it's not going to cut it. You know, it has to be rigid and it has to be able to take all that through.
one of the neat things about these cars is they are constantly evolving. Uh, as opposed to uh, an original Shelby where they were only built a certain way and you never want to take those out and change them. These cars, four-wheel disc brakes, oversized, you know, you've got ten times more horsepower, you've got air conditioning, where a lot of them didn't have that. You just it's completely changed from what it was then to what it is now. So you're basically getting all the technology of today's supercars in a classic format. It wasn't, really, as far as I know, we're the only people that offer something like that in a production vehicle. Classic recreations is for us to kind of help. And, uh, on this one is made by Ford Racing. It's a 351 stroke down to a 427. Just beautiful right. stuff. This is kind of a new technology we're using. It's a double pump uh, oh, system Steve, with no here. return. So your fuel injection pressurizes and keeps pressure to the system. And I don't know how many of the old systems you've heard where you're firing up the uh, uh, fuel pumps and you hear that. This one's quiet. Only stainless steel lines, the stainless steel rivets on our builds. Uh, you could go cheaper than that, but we, again, like I said, are proud of the underside of my car. And it allows you to see that stainless steel is never going to rust. It's always going to be easy to clean. You can also see the foundation for the Mustang 2 over here. And our power steering rack. Uh, 